we're about to do some stick welding here, and what you hear is the fan blowing. And one of the things I like about stick welding is you can blow a fan on it and blow the smoke past you. You don't have to breathe that stuff. To make welding, you're going to blow your gas away. Uh, you know, he, uh, TIG welding, obviously, is not just a no-go. You can't put a fan up there. But you know, I remember some of the jobs I worked, a fan was standard issue. It's so hot. And you're welding down in tunnels and down in tight areas. You had to put a fan on on uh, one side of you, behind you, to blow the smoke away from you and just to keep cool because it was just, you know, 95 degrees at 6 o'clock in the morning when you went into the concrete, big concrete building. So, uh, so I'm going to be blowing a fan across what I'm doing here today and uh, I'm not going to hurt it a bit. So that's one of the good things. That's why stick welding is so robust, why you can weld outside. You, know, you can weld in a, in a hurricane if you want to. So uh, we're going to be using the Power Pro 256 combo TIG stick plasma cutter. We're going to use it some 7018 18 And uh, I'm going to be showing you a little bit of a, a skip tick, or, you know, uh, where to put the tie-ins when you're welding box tubing, square tubing to a plate or to something flat. And uh, let's do it. All right, this is called backstepping, where you weld and then you back up and weld and tie in to where you started. So you have a tie-in on each corner and you melt in uh, to the place where you started. So if you have a, a little bit of a stutter on a start, uh, you can melt it all in and your, all your stops are on the corners. And it just looks, it looks good. It makes a nice, neat job for welding square tubing. It's a good way to do it. And uh, it's not the only way, but it is a good way to do it. So last uh, week we, we tried out the plasma cutter and left the torch on here. So I'm going to swap off the plasma cutter torch and put a stick welding stinger in here. And that's just there's just not much to that. You just undo the, the uh, high frequency pilot arc line and undo the cannon plug for the uh, uh, plasma torch control and then uh, turn the DENS connector and pull it all loose and uh, then wrap that up and then stick a stick welding stinger in its place. There's a couple different kinds of stick welding stingers and electrode holders and this is kind of a newer version and uh, the handle cranks and you put the electrode in the hole and then, and then crank it tight and it's kind of cool it kind of feels cool in your hand uh, but to, in order to get an odd angle on the electrode coming out of the electrode holder you just have to bend the electrode and so you know plus it takes just a little bit of extra time to chuck one out and chuck one back in and uh, if you're in a hurry if you might like to get in and out of a puddle real quick this is probably not the electrode holder for you however it does crank down on an electrode uh, a lot tighter than the old, the old school style and if you want to get an, an angle you just have to bend the electrode if you want to get a certain angle so uh, I'm kind of old school. I like the old school type because a lot of what I do, a lot of what I've done in the past is, uh, you know, pipe welding, and I like to get in and out of a puddle while it's still hot so I don't have to chip slag. And uh, this is just, I don't know, this is what I cut my teeth on, so that's what I like. All right, changing from the plasma cutter settings to uh, stick welder is pretty simple. So basically, it was set on, on the far right here that toggle switch is on cut, and I've got to go to stick. So press that on stick, and then uh, I want to make sure I'm on DC, and then I just basically set the amperage. And there's not much more to it than that, really. Make sure all your pulsers are off and everything. I'm really not sure that that matters. I haven't drilled down in the manual uh, on this uh Power Pro 256 to, to find out all the little nuances of it, so I'm just kind of feeling my way through it. Now, 7018 is which I'm what I'm going to be using here. Generally, burns about 120, 125 amps good on flat in the flat position. Uh, I wind up I wind up turning this thing up to about 145 to get it to run good. And uh, every machine's different, and every rod's different. Uh, actually one rod manufacturer to another can can vary quite a few amps so you know it's uh there are rules of thumb and uh then then there are the, there's the real world so once you you know you can go to an electrode amperage chart and get a starting point but if it seems too cold don't be afraid to turn it up that's what i did here so uh, i've got this thing clamped down and i'm going to tack it on all four corners and i'm going to try to hit the corners while the tip of the rod's still hot and that usually winds up giving you a good start. It didn't right here. So 
I, I get a file and I rough off the uh, sl that slag and then that gives me a good start and then I was able to grab the other the fourth tack while the electrode was still hot on the tip and uh, didn't have to chip it alright so now here's the sequence you know, starting on one corner welding all the way to the other corner and then when you're done with that you uh, back up I mean, there's there's always more than one way. You could you could just weld this thing all the way around. You could weld it and tie in, swap rods, light up, tie in to each corner, and just can, if you're good at good good at tie-ins, uh, that works. But if you if you stutter, this this technique I'm showing you is better because what happens is you can if you if you get a little bit a little bit of a poor start, you can make up for it by burning that start in once the rod gets going. And what I mean by that is um, because you are always welding to the previous start that you made, by the time you get there, the rod's good and hot, things are good and hot, things are going good, and then you can you can melt into and tie into that start and make a nice nice neat tie in on the, each corner. So what back step welding is, is instead of welding in, in, in series, you're actually welding in one direction but then backing up and then welding to where you started. So it works good on thin sheet metal, it works good on lots of things. Now 7018 is kind of a drag rod. You don't have to do any kind of manipulation. Some people like to make small little circles or a U shape. You don't really have to do anything but just drag it. And I like to have the machine set hot enough, hot enough to where I can hold a really close arc to where I can basically feel the tip of the rod scrubbing and it still won't stick. So I can just basically let, I can relax and I can let that tip dig in and just roll right along and then all I have to do is, I don't have to worry about arc length, all I have to worry about is watching the toes of the weld for undercut and uh, keep the size of my weld the same, keep my travel speed the same, and all that stuff, and I wind up with a pretty uniform weld if I do all that stuff right. Now, that was a start where I kind of missed, but then uh, what you want to do, I wanted to start about a half inch, but it just it just slipped and it came about an inch ahead. But as long as I'm re-welding over top of all those arc strikes, that's okay. So you always want to start you always want to strike your arc in a path that you're going to weld over top of your arc strikes. Arc strikes are bad. They will fail you out on a welding uh, certification test. They look bad and they actually are a problem, especially on high strength steels because they're a stress riser and a crack can start where an arc strike is because what happens is it's, arc strikes usually are very hard and brittle uh, because they heat up and quench so quickly. So when all this weld is all cleaned up nice, you know, chipped, slag chipped and brushed off and everything. You, you can see uh, why I recommend the technique. A tie-in is on every corner. It just makes for a nice neat looking job. It works. That's the biggest thing. It just works. Now if this were 10 inch box tubing you may not be actually you may not actually be able to even make it uh, from one corner to another and have to make a tie-in in the middle but uh, it's two inch so it's easily to easy to burn a rod and make it from one corner to another and only have tie-ins on the corners. Now here's a, some thicker metal, some one inch welded to some three-eighths and uh, that's after I got the machine set a little bit better you can see that uh, 7018 slag just peels right off makes a really nice looking weld that's what you want. When the slag peels off like that, it's a pretty good indicator you've got things set right. So that's the Everlast Power Pro 256 uh, stick welding. Thanks for watching and please visit WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. I do have quite a few t-shirts left. It's got a hog on it holding a, tor a TIG torch in one hand and a MIG torch in the other and uh, it says down and dirty weldingtipsandtricks.com and what's better than that